Okay, I'm working on the 1955 Buick Century uh, power steering unit, and I got the housing cleaned up. And one thing I like to do, and I did the same thing on the Dynaflow, is uh, get a new file, get a good quality file. This is a Nicholson. And I only use these files for one purpose, and that was just to check the flatness of these surfaces. I'm not trying to machine it or anything. I'm just going over it. You can see there's a lot of high spots, and this could uh, cause a leak um, when you get this thing all back together. And you don't want to put a lot of pressure on it. You just want to kind of drag it across and knock down any high spots. And I'm going to go over See, there's a high spot right there. There's some around here and here. And we're going to try to break that down. And we'll do that on all the surfaces. Okay, I spent a little bit of time on this and lightly went over it. You see there's still some low spots and stuff, but it's pretty darn good. It's way better than it was. And then that gasket material will make up for any small imperfections. But I, the main thing was I had a, some really big high spots. And I think I got rid of most of those. There's a couple low spots, but they're very small. So we're going to go with that. Um, I'm making a gasket for the end cap here and um, being as this thing is raised here it's difficult to get the holes punched out. But one thing that I've done in the past is that you lay it out and get it as flat as you can. Make sure your holes are lined up on the other end. And take a ball peen hammer and just gently tap where the hole is. you hold it in position and then do the other one this works pretty good with thin gasket material it doesn't work that good with thick gasket material but uh, that way you got perfectly aligned holes for your gasket All right, I'm working on the power assist part of the steering unit, and um, you've got the steel ceiling rings here on the piston itself and the housing here, and you've got the two O-rings that go here. These are the two O-rings, and those are a 232, commonly known as a 232 O-ring, and then inside here there's this o-ring and then this seal which goes inside of this and also seals the shaft there and then you have that plate washer here that goes up in there like that so we're going to be assembling this first uh, before we uh, assemble the actual unit so we'll get the sub-assembly put together first here now I've just installed that o-ring right there I don't know how well you can see that. Um, and now this seal goes in with the lip facing, of course, toward the, the pressure that's going to be in the housing here. So, And there's a relief cut in right there. I don't know if you can see it. So even if you put the seal in all the way, it's going to be, uh, there's going to be a relief cut underneath so that the, any pressure that builds up in there is going to escape. So don't worry about pushing the seal in too far uh, because that was not going to be a problem. Okay, I got the seal in. What I did was after I got it started going in straight, I actually put the retaining washer on here and uh, with using a socket 
uh, tap this in place so that uh, the seal is basically resting against this washer and that's really what you want you don't want to drive it all the way in um, because if pressure were to build up it could cock the seal now this is the retainer so it can't go any farther than that so that's really the perfect location uh, the new seal I installed is not quite as thick you know the depth as the one I took out uh, that's about all you can get so um, that's where we're at on that we'll start the reassembly of this piston okay we got this thing assembled got the nut tight here we got the o-ring seal installed in there and the little seal cover we got the two new o-rings there installed we got our steel ceiling rings the only thing I want to say is make sure that you get these ceiling rings opposite of each other just like if you're putting piston rings in you don't want them lined up um, but other than that we'll get this thing slid together okay the book uh, shows using a um, ring compressor to uh, put these in and I think that's possible I don't have one that's narrow enough to get underneath this and then take it off so I'm very carefully just manipulating those rings a little bit with uh, you know small screwdrivers um, the last thing you want to do is break one of those rings because I don't think your local Buick dealer is going to have those so uh, whatever it takes to get them in just be extremely careful okay I was able to get that thing in there without much trouble at all um, just manipulate a little bit with some small screwdrivers just real careful and that's all together so we'll move on to the next step okay one of the first things we need to do is get this seal installed in the sh for the shaft the housing now the lip you want facing toward the hydraulic part we're not attempting to keep the 90 weight from the gearbox out of the power steering fluid we're trying to keep the power steering fluid out of the gearbox so this lip has to face this way so when you drive it in be real careful you're gonna have to find something that fits this outer diameter really close um, you might be able to use a socket or whatever or a special driver depending on what you have uh, if you have a seal driver set that would be the best um, so just remember don't put it in this way because your power steering fluid is going to dump right into your gearbox so that would be uh, bad okay we're going to install the shaft in the housing and you can see I got I didn't change a bearing they're pretty tight and everything looks good I just put the seal in we're going to run this through from this side. Be real careful with sliding this in. So we don't damage that seal. in place and we'll put the end cap and gasket on and we'll tighten that down okay we have the shaft installed the steering shaft we have the end cap in place and the bolts torqued put the gasket in there we're now ready to put this uh, the hydraulic valve part of the unit over the shaft and you can see we've got washer bearing washer got the same thing on this side here and you want to make sure the orientation is correct check the book or check your photos um, to make sure that you're getting this thing uh, put together right I got my first housing o-ring installed with a little bit of uh, grease on it to hold it in place and uh, it tells you to first install it 
with the shaft horizontal and then once you get it on there is to flip it up vertical to make sure that that these uh, little ball bearings are seated properly before you go putting the rest of it together so that's what we're going to do alright I got my washer or bearing half slid on there and then I got the bearing and I got the other washer slid in place so now we'll put this other piece on okay I've got my valve block installed and I made some reference marks here and it looks like I have it oriented properly <clears throat> I am going to double check this before I go any farther but and of course I've got my races here my washer and my nut I'll put a little grease on that bearing there but I'm gonna double check that one more time uh, with my original photos before I go ahead and before I do any tightening of anything I will put this vertical to make sure that these bearings are orientated properly so we don't bust anything or mess something up so we'll keep moving along here Okay, uh, I've got the shaft in, I've got the valve in place, I've got it oriented properly. Um, I made sure that my uh, bearings were centered. And then I used these spacers on my bolts uh, because I don't have the special adapter that the book calls for. Basically it's a plate um, which has got the thickness of that housing. But anyway, I used these spacers with the bolts, snug those up. So now I got to go through the procedure of adjusting that. Uh, basically, it's the control for your that directs the power steering fluid to the piston. So that'll be the next thing in place. Get that done. 